Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking what happened when I took my homemade flash diffuser set up out to a number of nature reserves. So recently I did a poll on this channel and the top choice of you guys was this, to talk about this homemade flash diffuser and how it got on into nature reserves. Now I did plan to go out and just spend a whole day using it in a nature reserve, but unfortunately weather conditions and time have not been on my side so I've been using it for the last few weeks, going around local nature reserves, and this is what I've got. Now please do bear in mind that a lot of these shots were taken in between me doing some video and other stuff I've been working on. So they're not necessarily the best shots I've ever taken, but they do demonstrate how well this diffuser works, I think. I am going to be testing out that new homemade macro diffuser out in the field. So I've used it on those jumping spiders but that was only a, a brief test this is going to be a full test and i'm here at rainer marshes in the cordite store so let's go and see what i can get i shot this at iso 400 and f8 to avoid that dark background you get when using the flash only to light your subject so the cordite store is an old explosive storage site and as you can see it is full of brambles nettles umbilifers, various other wildflowers, and it's pretty much sheltered from the wind. So it's really good for macro, lots of insects and not too much wind, although it's not very windy today, so that's good. So unfortunately, lots of horse flies as well though. I soon spotted this labyrinth spider sat on its web and got as low as I could. I went to the aperture of F10 to get a better depth of field when I got close to this hoverfly cleaning and to F11 for this dock bug. This jewel beetle was only a few millimetres long, so I was near maximum magnification. It took a few shots to get a shot in focus, rocking the camera back and forwards, trying to get the depth of field just right on the subject. This ruddy data dragonfly just emerged, so it was quite cooperative, allowing me to get this close up, unusually from the underside. Well, as you can see, that was quite a successful look around the cordite store. Got some nice pictures there. The fuse is working well. I only managed this one okay shot of the honeybee before I had to head home, but I came back the next day. Hello again everyone, I'm back here at Rain and Marshes. Well, I'm just walking into Rain and Marshes. It's a beautiful morning, slightly hazy, and I'm gonna try and do a bit more macro, I think. Did all right yesterday, but it got a bit warm. Something a little bit earlier today. And I saw a bee chafer flying around, so I'm gonna see if I can find that too. I did manage to see the bee chafer, but I didn't manage to get a shot of the flash as they were not that cooperative, so I concentrated on filming them in the end. But that's a subject for another video. I'm back in the Cordite store again where I got some nice macros yesterday, so I'm going to have a look around. It's quite nice and still in here, it's not so windy. I got this lovely wolf spider female carrying around her eggs, but it was this spider mother that caught my attention. A nursery web spider sat on her web with her spiderling sat below her. So I got a variety of shots. But I had little more luck that day. But a week or so later, I headed to the ancient woodland of Hockley Woods. I was there to see butterflies, but these wood ants farm naphids caught my eye. Wood ants can be tricky as the reflective carapace make flash photography a bit hard. But the diffuser did well and I got a few shots despite the breeze starting up as soon as I started trying to take some macro photos. It always seems to happen. We moved on and we soon found our target species, the Heath Fertillary Butterfly. After capturing this one on a flower feeding, it began to cool down a bit, and I found a couple sitting on a leaf. Despite an annoying breeze, I got a few nice shots. And some proper close-ups.
but last week I went out just to test this diffuser. Right, I'm here today at Chapa Gorge. I'm here with my friend Graham. Who is, what's your username on YouTube? Uh, naturally Curious UK. Should have remembered that really, shouldn't I? Um, and I'm doing some more macro with the diffuser today, so uh, let's see what we can get. It was a bit late in the morning and we only had a couple of hours, but straight away we found some beetles feeding on the wild carrot flowers. In the bright conditions, I stuck with ISO 200, so the background came out a bit dark on this second image. Wandering into the main reserve, this white flower was covered in bees. As usual, it was tricky to get a shot without their head buried in the flower. And with the wind, I stuck with F11 to help me get the subject in focus as it rocks back and forward. But this meadow grasshopper sat for a nice close up. Well, we've got a few shots, but it's very windy today, which is making things interesting. We've come down to this spot at the edge of the pond. It's a bit lower down, a bit more sheltered, hopefully make the macro a little bit easier. This hoverfly posed on a leaf and this soldier beetle stayed still just long enough for a close-up. While Graham focused on his red admiral butterfly, I wandered over to the hedge and found this ladybird wandering around and grabbed a couple of shots. This is another subject that can suffer badly with reflection, but the diffuser seemed to handle it well. Time was running out by now, but there was just time to stop in the meadow to photograph this black and yellow longhorn beetle. And back on the wild carrot as we went out the exit, the red soldier beetles were demonstrating why ecologists call them bonking beetles. So the weather hasn't always been kind to me, but the diffuser's done all right, I think, as I've been out and about in these nature reserves. I'm still experiencing the same problems as before, it's really nice but on the raw files that I you know I've edited them from there is some you know quite bad reflection on some of them it's enough that you can edit out in Lightroom so that's good as you've seen from the photos the diffuser does a good job of controlling glare and reflections of the subjects so that's really nice but on the raw files that I you know I've edited them from there is some you know quite bad reflection on some of them it's enough that you can edit out in Lightroom, so that's good. Now, perhaps the biggest problem I'm finding when I'm out and about is that it is quite large and quite hard to transport. I've, I've been having to get the bus and getting it around on the bus and then having to set it up. And if you want to switch to another lens, you're going to have to take it all down again and flatten it down to put it in your camera bag if it's a bit windy because it might blow away. So I've had a few ideas on how to improve it and I'm going to have a go at making my own design um, and now if people want I will share how to make that design if it works <laughs> I'll definitely do a video on if it works that's for sure I've already bought a little LED light which might help with the darkness problem and I will make a video on that if people want so do let me know in the comments and I will definitely do a video on how well it works put it that way so yeah let me know any questions leave them in the comments below as always do subscribe if you like this video. Loads more wildlife, wildlife filmmaking, wildlife photography stuff to come on this channel. So if that interests you, do go subscribe. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.